Sandy, you were really young when you started TAV, isn't it? I was. <laughs> I was 21 oh. and um, I just finished my university degree in theatre and um, I was considering sort of going forward in my professional career and I got a call from Victor who said, uh, would you like to come to Belgium? Because we, we've, we've, Shumatiji started a theatre company uh, theatre of eternal values and you know <clears throat> there isn't actually a part for you in the play <laughs> but you can come and you can observe and you know you can help out and I just uh, I was very excited uh, to be part of anything you know to learn a, about the profession and um, so off I went on the ferry with Ken got to Belgium to um, Everbeck to the ashram, uh, quite nervous, not knowing what to expect. I didn't actually know a lot of the yogis uh, who, were, who were there. I think I knew Debbie vaguely. It turned out that they needed a part. There was a part available for me. Um, we did the imaginary invalid and it was Argon's brother, Berald, who turned into Beraldine. <laughs> and that, was, that became my role. And uh, we had an amazingly intense, um, beautiful, difficult, wonderful six-week <laughs> rehearsal period um, with the wonderful Catherine, who is our director, uh, who'd studied under Lecoq, so it was a very um, particular kind of style. And, um, you know, as a very young uh, sort of actress, I would say, who didn't believe in herself at all because I'd only done my degree and that was it. Um, it was a big challenge, uh, but these six weeks we had, uh, we were very much worked on in terms of um, learning how to perform. I mean, everyone else was professional, professional actors. So for me, I always felt like I was catching up with everybody. Um, but it was, my gosh, it was amazing. It was like a baptism of fire. Yeah. <laughs> a, a baptism of fire with everything in the melting pot. <laughs> and uh, just incredible, I mean, what a journey looking back on that beginning and then where we went from there. And, and I feel so grateful. And I obviously won't go through everything, but I feel so grateful to have been allowed uh, to have been part of this journey from such a young age because I got to absorb different acting styles and schools from all the different members of TEV, you know, from seven different countries or however many countries we were. So for me, I got a very global training. Yeah, uh, on and, top of my original training. Yeah, regarding that, uh, I wanted to ask Nicolette because uh, you came, of course, from your theatre tradition, theatre culture, and you knew uh, also about the Le the Lecoq um, style. Let's say you've been growing into that. So basically, you find yourself like a fish in the water, or there was something that <laughs> made it a bit more difficult for you. It was, uh, in some ways, it was really as, as if it's in the water because I knew the style and what, what was asked a bit more maybe than the others because I could definitely see that there were some uh, doubts and some uh, like, oh, what's going on here? What's going on here? And for me, that was a little bit easier because I knew the way of, of, of working a little bit more than the others. Um, it was, uh, I remember this first weekend in Avebeek with all these people, how much were we, 25? And that was also really interesting with all these people and uh, doing all these very different kind of styles from America and there were people from Germany and uh, that was really, really great. Um, I still remember that very, um, very interesting to meet yogis actually for the first time who, who were doing what what I was doing and I think it was one of the most amazing and life-changing things ever happening it was just really beautiful to be able to do to do it not for, and for you I would like to direct that to Tim because he's, oh. he was coming from a professional, of course, background as an actor, uh, being on stage. And uh, also, I think uh, you joined TAV a little bit later because of professional engagement, isn't it, uh, Tim? Um, yeah, I don't remember exactly what I was doing. I think I was doing like Traviata and Bohem or something. Yeah. So I, I was working yeah. for another company at that time, traveling around. Yeah, it was, it was a very difficult... <laughs> 
a very different way of working to what I was used to because even, even though I'd, I've done very sort of what, what are not particularly naturalistic pieces, we did them very naturalistically. So my, my background is more kind of filmic naturalism is what I'd say, even if it's not that naturalistic a piece. So to come at it from this angle with the, with the Lecoq thing was quite an adjustment for me. Um, although I'd done a little bits of it in the past, not, not to that extent. Um, but it was great to sort of that, that just um, that ebullience, that enthusiasm, that um, that sort of just joy of performing really comes through in that style, which is which is because it's so physical. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, there, there were some crazy moments where where you just grab onto an idea, mostly a physical idea, or or, or sort of more of a comedic idea, and this would suddenly become the whole scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the story just went out of the window. I remember there was a whole scene that came about Gita laughing, basically. Yeah, exactly. I, I can't even remember what the scene was about, but it became about Gita laughing. And this went on for about, I don't know, a good five minutes. So, so, so I think the first production, even the one in India, went on for about like three and a quarter, three and a half hours. Yes. And I remember when we got when we got to Edinburgh, we suddenly had to had to get it down to two hours. And I, I remember Kathleen literally pulling her hair out, thinking, "I can't throw any of it away." <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So we had to squeeze, had to stuff this enormous play into into two hours. <laughs> Was, it was such a special time. And as you said, the enthusiasm of starting a project that... I well, mean, it, was, uh, it was the joy of theatre, wasn't it, basically? Yeah. But that that's, really, that's what we established yeah. first, just the yes. sheer joy of being together as a company, being on stage and, and just, just shining, basically, yeah. um, in, a, in, a, in a relatively pure environment as well. As I said, we, we mostly rehearsed in outside from what I remember in in the grass in Cabela and um, between piglets and uh, and things and <laughs> wild boar <laughs> animals and, <laughs> and wildebeest going across the plain <laughs> <laughs> please George tell us you came from South Africa to Tev I mean why what did you hear how did it happen well I trained uh, in various aspects of theatre for about two years, um, and then heard about Theatre of Eternal Values, and I must have emailed Victor, and I believe he just went on vibrations, and <laughs> I got the part of Thomas Dieparus. Wow. So, <laughs> um, also, I joined after the Your India Tour experience, so I was also joining in 97. Um, I think I took the part that Tillman had been playing up to that point, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah, that's right. Um, ah, okay. So yeah, I didn't go through all the workshopping that uh, the rest of uh, you had gone through. Um, and in I just had to, uh, yeah, I mean, we did the, the practicing in the fields um, outside uh, outside Boguera, actually. Um, yeah. I think we, we all yeah. stayed in your flat and uh, I remember, um, I, remember I, I managed to, Crash Victor's car driving on the wrong side of the road. Oh my God, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a new experience for me as well. Also, I mean, I was uh, relatively relatively new in Sahaj. Um, I um, sort of third, third year in Sahaj and uh, sort of joining an international collective and seeing technology for the first time. Um, I think my first time in Cabela was Mother's Day that, that year. Oh. So it was, yeah, it was all a very new experience um, with so many new faces. I had faxed a picture of myself and Victor was looking for somebody that looked vaguely like a black and white photo. <laughs> <laughs> um, he obviously had no idea what I looked like uh, from that. And I, I think I had recognized him from one of the, I suppose, Cabela videos from, from a previous year. Um, so I introduced myself at the airport and then we, we caught a train through to, uh, I think he gave me a bunch of scripts because you'd probably just gone through the process of re rewriting uh, and shortening the play because I never joined it in the three and a half hour version. 
Uh, <laughs> the, the, the script didn't get much shorter. It wasn't the script no, that needed shortening. No, it was just the, <laughs> the business. The business so in between the words. <laughs> It's, yes, called, um, it's called spontaneity, you know, we got lots of that in it and, and work with that. So it was constantly but, changing. You know, you know? Shumatiji actually remarked on that because uh, she, after the performance in Cabela, she, she'd seen it and she said, you were very much, it was very funny. It was a very original take on the script and, and you even <laughs> went beyond it. <laughs> the comedy went beyond the script, you know, she, she mused about that. Again, you can have a she goes for me. No. No. I hate to look. Look, 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 And Debbie, um, how was it to start a project like that? I mean, with yogis, then up to then, you know, you, you meet the yogis, you know, in a certain environment, in a certain atmosphere, and suddenly you meet all these yogi artists <laughs> um, yeah. that allow themselves somehow to be very much themselves in their own character and uh, to cope with that melting pot you know i mean it was quite something um, to be revealed like that to each other and to grow uh, this amazing tev family because that that's exactly what happened yeah absolutely i mean i just come from india so i'd been doing a uh, indian classical vocal at nagpur academy and then um that's where i'd met gita who who had also been there studying and she'd got she'd got a message from Victor saying we're forming a theatre company so suddenly I just threw myself into that as well because I trained I trained as an actress and singer but I've been mostly concentrating on singing for the last few years because nothing was happening in the acting world for me in London so I just kind of I'd almost given up I think and then I suddenly heard about this Sahaj theatre company and I was like Oh, well, that's what I need to be part of. So I was there at the first seminar with Nicolette as well. And yeah, I think there were at least 20 people there. I can't remember now. Um, and then straight into this rehearsal period. So Shumatiji at the time was, was choosing the actors from our CVs, which Victor told us about later. Um, so I had no idea that was happening. And then suddenly we're just thrown into this rehearsal period with people that you mostly don't know. And um just trying to figure out all the different characters from different countries and all our quirks as actors, as well as yogis, you know, yogis are all different, different kettles of fish. And um, it was just remarkable to be part of something right from the beginning. I mean, cause that had never happened for me before. So that in itself was, was amazing just to, to be there. I'll give you, provided that you tell me the whole truth. Oh yes, Daddy. Because here's my little finger, and it knows everything, and it will tell me at once if you lie. And you won't tell my sister I told you? Nope. <clears throat> A man came into my sister's room while I was there. Well? I asked him what he wanted, and he said he was her music master. Ah, so that's her little game. And after that? Um, then my sister came. Uh-huh. And? She said, go, for heaven's sake, go. You'll drive me to despair. Yes. He didn't want to go. Well, what did he say to her?
and there was so much laughing you know yeah. like Tim was saying you know we just we just were crazy sometimes we just <laughs> improvised in such a way that there was nothing left of the original script and we just we just went with it because it was fun <laughs> <laughs> and the original music as well so we had Didier and Philippe yeah so Didier was 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 accordion and keyboards and Philippe was percussion and together they just created this backdrop for us and we were just crazy on top of it. You had to tell to all these people about this project. I mean, you had to bring the message and well, I was, out. I, I, I was just amazed at how enthusiastic and prepared everybody was to drop everything and just come along. When do we start, you know? And um, it was overwhelming, the mere fact that Sri Mataji had, you know, commissioned this theatre company, this, um, we didn't even know what we were going to perform at the beginning, you know. I mean, I asked her on an occasion uh, how she would like us to work together, what style of performance she would like to have, how, what, or was there any method she would, would, you know, advise? And she said, you must meditate together. And say the three mantras, my, my mantras, uh, give you, and put yourselves in bandhan, which means raising the kundalini and connecting to her and connecting to each other. And then everything else would stem from that in a sort of bubble of vibrations and good, you know, uh, allowing space for her to guide us and inspire us. You know, so we wouldn't be mistaken in saying that she was our creative guide, our artistic director. I mean... Yes, absolutely. We could, really feel, uh, we, could, we could really feel the moment, you know, we were on stage rehearsing or just trying out uh, scenes and we could just feel when it was right because mm -hmm. then the vibration would just be there. So we, we really felt all the time that Shimadji was guiding us. Okay, yeah, nah, like this is okay, like this is okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say a style evolved, you know, you can't say there was a single aesthetic and you can define the company by the way it performed because it was Catherine in that performance. Other productions have had a different aesthetic stamp, if you like, or character or style. So it, it, we're not bound by that in any way or defined by that. I think what is defining is the joy that everybody is describing and the flow of energy of yeah. vibrations through the actor as instruments because they have a spiritual connection through the seventh center the meditative process and they are conductors or conduits of energy dynamic spiritual energy that can then awaken something special in the audience so it's very it's very difficult to understand uh, for a person that sees the imaginary invalid for example which was the first production <laughs> ah. the mother I mean, the play the mother decided for us. We were expecting something, you know, like maybe again the, the Mahabharata or the Ramayana or the story of Shakuntala. The Theatre of Eternal Value came in a moment where we only knew the Indian culture in Saj and only the music, especially. Or even when they were going to India, they went to see theatre in India. But what about the Western culture? What about all the rest? Because there is some part which is good as well. So it was a chance. It was a chance for the Western culture to manifest through theater. And as Vito was saying, to include also the other arts and to give it a purpose to be used as an instrument. Nature, if we all but leave her to it, will find her own way out of the difficulties to which she's fallen. It is our restlessness. It's our own impatience which is the downfall of everything. Most men die of their remedies, not of their diseases. But you must admit there are ways and means of assisting nature. Good heavens, brother. It's a sort of delusion we all like to indulge in. Men have always entertained these credulous fancies because they flatter their self-importance and because they'd like to be true. When a doctor 
Walter talks to you about aiding, relieving or assisting nature. I mean, what's, what's really interesting about, um, about the choice that Shimatari made of, of imaginary invalid is it's actually about the middle way. It's about moderation. But at the same time, what the interesting kind of uh, dynamic of the piece and the, the way we did it is that the, all the comedy is in the excess. So there's comedy in excess, but the message, the, which it always returns to, is about the moderation. It's about the Sahaj way. It's about being in the central channel. And it's about channeling that spirit, about being that spirit and manifesting it. And we'd have amazing moments where we, we, we couldn't decide whether you go in this direction or that direction. And they said, well, let's try that. And as soon as you did that, sometimes you would feel like a, an amazing vibration literally coming out of the Vishuddhi. Not so much Sarasrara, really focused on Vishuddhi, I mean, just coming, radiating. And that is a clear indication we started to, um, to use the phrase divine director. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. you I mean, know. A lot of it, I think, it was in the script already. Was, huh? Yeah, a, lo a lot of it was in the script because having, having looked at some of the old clips, a lot of it was there in particularly Sandy's part in Beryl Dean, where she talks about, um, you know, you don't need doctors. What? And he's going, well, what do I do if I'm ill? nothing that's that's her she goes I'm nothing you know you just it, it's all inside you you heal yourself and that was you know the main crux of the message there and that he you know we certify him at the end as his own kind of doctor with this weird let, let's not talk about the finale because it's bizarre <laughs> but also the fact also Porna's character because the character didn't exist at all you know and we just I don't think you even thought you were going to be part of it at first. When we first started rehearsing, you were just a young mother. You were there with Maxime as four years old, you know, and just kind of there. And then suddenly this character of an angel developed. And well, it's that a deus ex machina kind of thing. It's the, it's the divine yeah. force manifesting as a character. Exactly. And and her message was so clear in, in what that brought to the play. So, yeah, somehow the Tev style just kind of came from mixing so many things we don't have somebody like that okay we'll do this then you know and it just it, it just kind of worked you know yeah allow yourself to be an instrument i mean to be used yeah. by the divine director okay. <laughs> evolved as time went on so I mean uh, as different people brought different things to different parts what was interesting is how it actually changed the mix and changed the piece it was yeah. always very interesting so it was always a live immediate thing it wasn't a fixed thing like you've made your video and it's going to remain like that for the rest of time how many people actually supported us I mean when yes. we rehearsed in yeah. rehearsing in Austria when we rehearsed Charlie's aunt in Avignon um, I know. Oh, yeah. Sandy's family up in the Midlands, you know, <laughs> Edinburgh. Yeah. We played yeah, also yeah. so much for the collectives and they all wanted us and supported us. That was beautiful, so beautiful, this collective well, it, it, it thing that it did. It always was, basically, a travelling ashram. Reinhardt, how come you joined this adventure and uh, what happened when you uh, knew about it at first? That's a good question, and I can't answer it. I have no idea. I thought about it, knowing that a question like that would, would come up. I have no idea how I came in contact with Tev. The only thing I, I remember is seeing and hearing when I came to Zahaj, Victor singing in Cabela, and I thought, oh my God, what a voice. I want to connect with these people. I want to connect with actors in, in, in Zaj Yoga. And I thought I'd never be worthy, you know, I'd never be worthy of doing this. And, and how it actually came to this, I don't know. We did Puja plays in, in Cabela. And then I was, I was part of it. I found myself in Everbeck in a, in a barn. <laughs> on, on a well, really exciting journey, you can say that loud. Yeah. <laughs> and, 
what what is it that you remember on this first tour? It's always a very exciting roller coaster of incredible joy, uplifting joy, and incredible moments of I don't know abysses that open up like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this in a, in a in a in a time frame of half an hour, incredible joy, and half an hour. A mountain of hatred in the room, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and you have people running around giving bandans, bandans, bandans. This mountain is gone, and the joy is there, and we rehearsed again. So you had an uh, amazing experience during this first period. And I would like to ask you what you remember of it. <laughs> well, we, we all came from seven different countries, the first uh, cast uh, of TEF. And we did not only bring knowledge from seven different countries, we also brought egos and our luggage from seven different countries. So that sometime escalated. And uh, we had all what Reinhardt said. We had this crying and uh, I'm packing my suitcase and leave. And we had uh, <laughs> the, 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 the slamming doors and everything you can imagine, what also normally happens in a theater group. But when we came to our meditation and we all sat together, all that was history. And the vibrations, they were so strong when we would meditate. And there was no doubt that Shimataji had a lot of attention on this project and we were all friends again. <laughs> If it's a dream, or if it's true, then I love you. Servinetti! Ci grazie, niente. Servinetti con un capitisco, va.
long time relationship. <laughs> As Reinhardt said, we had a lot of joy. We had laughters and we had so much fun. And we were poor, we were always broke, we had no money, <laughs> but we were so happy most of the time. And it was an amazing, amazing experience. Ken, how was it for you? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, to begin with, I remember, I can remember attending the, the work, the initial workshops where the, the, re, the really true birth of Tev were these workshops. I think they were in Everbeck, I, I, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I remember coming, you know, for the imaginary invalid, I remember coming uh, with a real crutch, a real stick, because I had just uh, <laughs> dislocated my knee. And, uh, you know, um, but I just, I loved what was going on. I just, it was just such a mix from every direction. And I somehow ended up playing the, the actual imaginary invalid, Argonne. <laughs> and then I'm really glad that everybody has spoken about all the friction and everything, because I was afraid, you know, we, would we were going to be expected to give a rose colored <laughs> version. But no, it was really, they, they talk about, you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. Boy, did we break some eggs. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> I remember, you know, I came, I was one of those ones who came with nice big ego because um, and I don't, I'm not saying that in a like really self-deprecating way, but I thought I, you know, I understand farce and I understand, you know, comedy and all this. I had these ideas that I came with and I came like with the director, with Catherine Gruyere for quite a, quite a, a while. I couldn't understand what she was asking me to do. I thought, I know how to do this. Just let me do it in the right way. Right, right, right. And she was asking me to do the most absurd things. Now, the interesting thing about that was that years earlier at the Edinburgh Festival, I had seen a company called Teatro de, Complic Teatro de Complicite. Right. And it was what, I thought it was one of the best things I had ever seen. And then later on, I finding out that um, Catherine was, her work was based on Jacques Lecoq, who I believe is connected with, with all of that. But I didn't know that. And I didn't know any of the methodology behind it. So this was all so strange and foreign to me. And so I think I was putting up the defenses and all this. And then something clicked at some point. I think because of our meditations, because of the vibrations, um, this very strange atmosphere was, was out of my comfort zone. And we were, you know, locked away in this in this barn in Everbake. You know, I remember we used to show up in the morning and 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 the door would close and that would be the last sunlight we would see <laughs> for hours, you know. And we were just immersed in this world, but something clicked. <laughs> and I began to realize what a genius Catherine was because she created something completely outside my expectations. And that was the, the best thing that I ever took away from Tev is surrender to things that don't surrender, no comply with your expectations and you, can't imagine what the rewards can be. To add waves to the ocean and stars to the sky. My father in heaven, my mother the earth. They made me a man. They gave me my birth. But you, great men of learning, have opened the door and made me a doctor, which is so
product that was absolutely unique and beautiful. And as far as the vibrations concerned, they were through the roof. Everywhere we went, we were playing for students here. And, you know, we go, we went to these terrible places. Uh, but there was a place, I think, in Austria that had once had been a Nazi headquarters of some sort. And, you know, and I think at that place, we, we played on a stage about the size of this table that I'm sitting on now. <laughs> and like 12 of us all squeezed in and all this. And we gave, you know, whatever version of the play we could with all the, uh, and it always left the students going, wow. And we got so many letters. I've actually got a stack of letters preserved the, um, that uh, from the students who just, the, the, some of the things they said were so deep that they really got something out of it. And I, none of us could understand it really, it, not on the brain level. India was as, as as amazing as Everbeck was, you know, there were less nervous breakdowns in India, but the, the obstacles, the outside obstacles were incredible. I mean, I never, Martin Moore, the, the stage designer of Imaginary Invalid, is a big, strong man who can cope with many things. <laughs> At this day, after he has built the, the third version of the stage design, and the thing burned down in the morning, I had him crying in my arms, weeping, you know, like 10 minutes, this strong, big man. After these 10 minutes, he said, okay, let's do it. And went to the stage and with some Indians built the most wonderful stage design I've ever seen out of bamboo and out of yellow saris. That saris, were, yeah along the bamboos. It was so beautiful. I remember also rehearsing on the roof of, of Vashi. Such a beautiful atmosphere, you know. You heard the bells of the temples. You heard the, the, the muezzin of, of, of the mosque. Then we were in the middle doing European theater. Ah, oh, here's my wife. This is Mr. Biafra's son, my love. Madam, rightly has heaven bestowed on you the title of mother since uh, in your visage we behold... Uh, yeah. I am delighted to be in time to have the honor of seeing you, sir. In your visage we behold... In your visage... Visage. <laughs> you interrupted me in the middle of the sentence, and I don't know how to continue now. <laughs> keep it, keep it for another time, Thomas. Uh, you want your pills? Oh, later, later, good. The thing that will go down in history is that Her Holiness Shri Mataji Nirmala Devi, the greatest spiritual figure of all time, um, created a theatre company and thus blessed the arts forever.
<laughs> so, so thank you so much uh, for all of this and um, so we hope to meet uh, together very soon in person and to be able to continue this journey through 100,000 production more. 